It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for Tuesday, the 20th of July. I'm Michael Groff. A fairly low-grade monsoon in effect today and tomorrow, partly sunny, hot, and humid in the valley. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms will occur over the mountains. A few of those will get into the lower deserts. But a major change in the weather pattern comes in Thursday, Friday, and heading into the weekend with much cooler temperatures, increasing clouds, and numerous to perhaps widespread showers and thunderstorms and the potential of some significant rain across parts of the state. Of course, there are a lot of questions as to where, when, and how much rain there will be, and we'll try to answer those as we dive in and discuss. As always, we'll check out the almanac from yesterday. 105 degrees was the afternoon high, 88 the morning low, the normal high 107, the normal low 85. And as we take a peek outside now, here at 9.05 a.m., scattered clouds sitting at 93 degrees at Sky Harbor. But it's another muggy morning with the dew point at 66, relative humidity 41 percent. The winds are light and the barometer is rising. Checking out the current radar, a few showers and thunderstorms ongoing across southwest Arizona and southeast California right now. Those are pushing off to the west-northwest, light to occasionally moderate rain in those. Otherwise, it's pretty quiet around here. The upper air look right now, the features of note for us, we've got a ridge of high pressure over Colorado, a pretty typical monsoon setup with southeasterly flow aloft, and a trough over the southeast U.S. Why am I mentioning that? Because believe it or not, that feature over the southeast will actually become a weather maker for us potentially late in the week and next weekend as it starts to retrograde. It's actually going to go back toward the west and get caught up in our monsoon ridge. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Here's the watch warning map, some flash flood watches across parts of North Georgia and Alabama, and heat advisories, the big story across parts of the West and out into the Northern Plains, red flag warnings up there as well as conditions remain dry and hot. And so the wildfire potential continues to increase. We have an air quality alert once again for Maricopa County, so all of you asthma sufferers and those with respiratory conditions might want to try and limit your outdoor activities today. Here's the convective outlook, a slight risk of severe storms up around Buffalo, Syracuse, Rochester. And here in Arizona, we're in the green, so some thunderstorm activity is expected. No organized severe weather, but of course, as always, during the monsoon, any one storm can become locally severe. Now, take a look at this. Here's the precipitation outlook. This is valid through next Tuesday morning from the WPC. Rain amounts in Phoenix between about an inch to an inch and a quarter. That's great news. And two to four inch amounts fairly widespread up across the rim, the eastern mountains, and along the southern border of our state. And if this pans out, it is exactly what we need with such a severe drought ongoing across Arizona and much of the greater southwest. Of course, there are still some question marks and some uncertainties involved. We'll try to figure it all out right now as we take a look at modeling. Here we go. This is the GFS, the 06Z run, valid at 2 o'clock this afternoon. This is the upper chart at 500 millibars. That's about 18,000 feet off the ground. All right, there's our ridge across the Rockies, a southeasterly flow here in Arizona, and a trough over the southeast U.S. beginning to retrograde to the west. And we'll watch that feature. But for today, down at the surface, partly sunny, hot and humid in Phoenix, high temperatures between about 101 to 105. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms will be focused over the higher terrain, and a couple of those will rumble their way into the lower deserts. And one of the questions that we are asked all the time is why is it that some days seem like they'd be active monsoon days and they turn out to just be a bunch of nothing? And this is one of those days that on paper, it sure looks like we'd have a good setup for showers and storms. So let's take a look at some of those parameters here as we check out our CAMs, the convective allowing models. This is the high resolution rapid refresh or HRRR model at five o'clock today. This is the precipitable water value and you can see pretty excessive numbers here over south central arizona p watt values 1.7 1.8 inches with over two inch amounts in the southwestern portion of the state and what that means is the atmosphere is ripe with moisture but the problem is with that disturbance moving out of southwest arizona and into southeast california behind it we're going to see some subsidence or sinking air across the south central portion of the state where we live So that's going to put a cap on the atmosphere and limit the number of showers and storms. The other limiting factor is that winds aloft are fairly light. Here's the bulk shear values today, and you can see storms that develop over southeast Arizona, they're going to move pretty slowly. So they'll probably fizzle out a couple of hours after sunset before they have an opportunity to get into our part of the state. But again, 
the chance of rain isn't technically zero, but coverage is going to be fairly limited. This is the simulated radar product at 5 o'clock, and it shows some showers and storms mostly concentrated over the northern part of the state, favoring the higher terrain features, but there will be some popcorn, little renegade showers and storms that pop up here and there in south-central Arizona today, and any one of those would be capable of producing some heavy rain, but your chance of getting wet is probably only about one out of five. All right, then tonight, we're partly cloudy, isolated showers and storms, overnight lows in the 80s, then tomorrow. A slightly better coverage of showers and thunderstorms will be with us, but again, there's no obvious triggering mechanism, so they'll stay fairly widely scattered, and the steering flow remains fairly light for tomorrow as well. So, again, about a 20% chance we'll see some showers and storms in here tomorrow afternoon, a slightly better chance tomorrow night. And high temperatures tomorrow, this should be the warmest day of the period with highs 103 to 107. Then by Thursday, the weather pattern gets decidedly more interesting here. We've got our trough across the southeast U.S. now retrograding into Texas and eastern New Mexico. The flow aloft is beginning to increase, moisture levels picking up, and instability is increasing over the state as well. So now we're going to see numerous showers and thunderstorms over the mountains, and they will have better coverage into the lower deserts as well. The potential of heavy rain is increasing. A few of these storms could be severe as well, producing some strong gusty winds. But I think the main threat will remain the heavy rain and the potential of flood or flash flooding, especially in our burn scar areas where we've had the wildfires this summer. High temperatures continue to trend down. We should be around 98 to 102 with mostly cloudy sky on Thursday. On Friday, here comes our easterly wave across New Mexico. Widespread showers and thunderstorms in the mountains and numerous showers and storms in the lower deserts, including Phoenix, mostly cloudy to cloudy sky, high temperatures in the low to mid 90s at best, and there's some guidance that holds us in the 80s all day. Now I will tell you, I have a little bit of trepidation on this forecast only because we're talking about a closed low or an inverted trough a few days out, and there is a bit of model spread here, even though forecast confidence remains fairly high that we will see a definitive pattern change, and a dramatic increase in moisture across the state, I'm still not fully ready to buy into this just yet. And the reason for that is because in these types of patterns, conceptually, we'll have a lot of clouds around, and that might keep the atmosphere a bit more stable. And so we might just get more of these stratified light showers over the southern deserts. So the heavy rain potential may be a little less for us, but we'll just have to see, because if model guidance is correct, instability should not be a problem. And if we do get some peaks of sun, uh, that would further destabilize the atmosphere. For now, we're just going to broad brush with a 60% chance of rain. Yes, believe it or not, 60% chance of rain here in Phoenix for Friday. And we will mention that threat of locally heavy rain. And it's pretty much the same forecast on Saturday. Widespread storms in the mountains, numerous showers and storms in the lower deserts. They will favor the afternoon and evening hours, but they could happen anywhere at any time, and any storm could produce that locally heavy rain. So high temperatures again, low to mid 90s at best. Now as we go to Sunday, that trough is going to continue to push to the west, and so we should start to see at least a decreasing trend in shower and storm coverage, although I still think we have a decent chance of storms. And high temperatures warm back up a little bit to the mid and upper 90s, but that's still well shy of our seasonal averages. And that could mean we have three, maybe four days with high temperatures that do not make the century mark. And that doesn't happen very often in the month of July in Phoenix. Now on Monday, this run of the GFS is actually quite a bit drier for us. And if that's correct, high temperatures would probably go back up above the century mark with only isolated showers and storms across the state. But I've seen other runs on the GFS and the Euro that have more showers and storms overhead. It's way too far out right now to say for sure, but conceptually, yes, we would have more subsidence, so that would lead to drier conditions and maybe only isolated storms. Here's a week from today. This is Tuesday the 27th. Our inverted trough merges with an eastern Pacific wave to form, well, what is a traditional or non-inverted trough, kind of a neutrally tilted system out there just to the west of us, and with ridging far to the east, more of a south to southwesterly flow would develop, and that should at least temporarily serve to dry us out and keep thunderstorm activity a bit limited. But this is a week out, and the exact positioning of these systems may well change just a bit. Then as we look out 10 days, this is Thursday the 29th, and ridging is over the central plains. 
We're on the western periphery of that and another disturbance coming into southern Arizona and that could lead to an increase in showers and storms once again. And high temperatures wouldn't be too bad, probably just a few degrees below normal. All right, now let's take a look at rainfall for Phoenix over the next couple of weeks. This is coming off of the European Ensemble. And the mean here is about an inch and three quarters. But you've got some members that are up around two and three, even a couple that are poking up toward four inches. And I don't think we're going to see that kind of precipitation. But this is legitimately the best opportunity we have had for significant rainfall in the monsoon in the last three plus seasons. So let's hope this does pan out because we could really use some significant rainfall across the state and over much of the greater southwest. And temperatures off the national blend of models, 107 tomorrow, and that's going to be the warmest day of this forecast period. And then after that, yeah, how about three, maybe even four consecutive days with high temperatures below 100 degrees? Yeah, sign me up. And that potential of increased precipitation as well. And then we'll gradually warm it up and maybe dry it out at least a little bit as we go into next week. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video back here tomorrow morning. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, like, share, and click that notification bell so that whenever a brand new video is posted, you'll get the notice. Your comments, questions, and suggestions are always encouraged as well. Thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. You guys be safe, stay cool and hydrated out there, and have yourselves a terrific Tuesday.